There was a time when Iranians loved America and looked upon their democracy as a role model. However, this relationship did not last long as the Iranian democracy was overthrown by the British and American greed for oil. The year is 1953 and the world is in the beginning of the Cold War. The United States and the Soviet Union are competing around the world for influence while countries gain their independence and start their own way of development. In the case of Iran, in 1953 they had their first democratically elected prime minister in their 4000 year history and his name was Mohammad Mossadegh. Mossadegh was a popular champion of democracy and Iranian independence from colonial rule. He idealized American democracy and was building Iran to become the democratic model for other countries in the Middle East to follow. He also was a big supporter of Iran nationalizing their oil industry, which by that point has been controlled by the Anglo-Iranian oil company or as it's called nowadays British Petroleum. Why that was the case? Well, in order to find out, we need to look at briefly at Iran's modern history. In order to understand why Britain got to exploit Iran's oil fields, we need to go back to the early 1900s. In 1908, when the British discovered large oil fields in Iran, their interest in controlling Persia grew exponentially. At that time, Iran was a weak constitutional monarchy stuck between the Russian, Ottoman and the British empires. During the First World War and the subsequent victory of the British, they gained the upper hand and exercised the biggest amount of influence in Persia. In between the two world wars, Iran and Britain negotiated the 1933 agreement under which the Anglo-Iranian oil company was required to pay a fixed amount annually for extracting oil from Iran. It was widely viewed as an unfavorable agreement as demand for oil around the world was rising. The agreement was signed during the rule of Reza Shah, the father of Mohammad Reza Shah, who we are going to talk about later on. During the Second World War, Iran was again briefly occupied by the British in order to protect the supply of oil. Subsequently, it was granted independence after the war. After the British occupation ended, Mohammad Reza Shah replaced his father and was installed as the ruler of Iran. The country became a constitutional monarchy with limited powers of the monarch. The parliament of Iran held most of the power, which was democratically elected. After a few years of instability, and changing governments, in 1951 Iran elected Mohammad Mossadegh as their prime minister. He was popular and in large parts because of his support for nationalizing Iran's oil industry. In the years leading up to the nationalization, the Iranian anger over the British exploitation of the oil grew. Despite the record profits that the Anglo-Iranian oil company was making at the time, it was sharing only about 18% with the Iranian government. In comparison, around the same time, an American company reached an agreement with the Saudi government on the basis of 50-50 profit sharing. A similar agreement was also reached in Venezuela. When the Iranians tried to negotiate a better agreement for themselves, and I should say a fair one, the British government rejected any proposals. After all negotiations failed, in May of 1951, the Prime Minister of Iran nationalized the oil industry. Tensions between Iran and Britain boiled up. Britain imposed sanctions and an oil embargo over Iran. The Iranian economy was severely damaged and the country went into a crisis. The population became poorer and even though most people supported nationalization, the discontent with Mossadegh's government was growing. After seeing that a negotiated agreement would not be reached, 
the British government decided to overthrow the democratically elected prime minister with the help of the United States. America was in the midst of the Cold War and was viewing Mossadegh's socialist policies as leaning towards the Soviet camp. In addition, they didn't want the nationalization of the oil industry to become popular and spread to other nations in the region. However, a secret document later released showed the real intentions. Specifically, the aim was to bring a government which would reach an equitable oil settlement. The director of Central Intelligence at the time, Alan Dulles, dispatched two of his associates, Kermit Roosevelt and Rocky Stone, to Tehran to orchestrate the coup. The first coup attempt was carried out by the British Intelligence Service, working together with the CIA and with the tacit support of the Shah, who was hoping to gain more power after the coup. He issued a decree dismissing Mossadegh as Prime Minister and appointed General Zahedi, who was a loyalist supporting the monarchy. However, news reached Mossadegh that there was a coup attempt organized by Britain and the Anglo-Iranian oil company to remove him from office and he quickly rallied his supporters and hundreds of thousands of people took to the streets to support Iran's democratically elected prime minister. He also had the commander of the Imperial Guard, General Nasiri, arrested and after fearing for his safety, the Shah of Iran, together with his family, fled the country. After capturing and arresting most of the coup plotters, Mossadegh ordered his supporters to go back home. He also expelled all British diplomats and British Petroleum representatives. However, he made the fatal decision of not expelling the CIA. This proved to be a fatal mistake, as the American administration under President Eisenhower was full on regime change mood. The second attempt this time was successful. Roosevelt used his enormous resources of money to bribe military officers, religious leaders and stir up a fake demonstrations against Mossadegh by paying off protesters. It showed how vulnerable early democracies are to coup attempts and how little money it took for the CIA to organize it. You had a million dollars in cash to run the coup, right? That's right. And we used about $60,000 of it. Yeah, $60,000 was enough. On 19 of August 1953, the paid protesters took to the streets and violent clashes took place. This was a pretext for the military to step in and restore order. The bribed military commanders went on to arrest Mossadegh and put him under house arrest. Mohammad Reza Shah flew back to the country and was installed as the leader of Iran. Ironically, on his return, he was accompanied by Alan Dulles himself, the director of the CIA. Hmm, I wonder who was behind the coup attempt. After the Shah was installed into power, he favored Western oil companies, which he granted access to Iranian oil fields. Alongside British Petroleum this time, US oil companies were also allowed to operate in Iran. The country was then ruled for more than two decades by the Shah, who went on to terrorize his population with his secret services who were trained by the Americans. Eventually, this led to the 1979 Iranian Revolution and the overthrow of the monarchy. We are going to cover this event in a different video. So briefly, that was what happened in Iran in 1953. The CIA and the British Intelligence Service overthrow a democratically elected government for dominance and oil. We can see that when it comes to profits and control of natural resources, the United States government, contrary to its own principles, can topple democratic governments in favor of, we can say, puppet dictators. The Iranian people chose a democratic path and wanted to control their own natural resources. but. When you go against Western capitalist interests, you become the target of assassinations and coups. Another irony is that the same people who worked for the US government and the CIA at the time and helped orchestrate the coup, like Kermit Roosevelt, after finishing his public career, 
he went on to work and represent the same oil companies which gained access to Iranian oil fields after the coup. Whatever the official reason for the coup attempt might be, the facts speak for themselves. In the end, Iran's population suffered and paid the price for the Western company's profits. This was our coverage of the events that took place in Iran in 1953. If you liked our video, give us a thumbs up and share your opinion by leaving a comment below. Please make sure to subscribe and support our channel for more videos like this one and until next time.